try to answer anything I can. Big, big week here. We're starting starting academics tomorrow. School starts tomorrow, so there's a lot going on in our building right now. Uh, everyone getting ready. You know, I think that's something that's lost often on people. You know, they watch the games on TV and they see these big, fast guys running around, making great plays. Um, being a student athlete at Rutgers is a huge challenge. Um, academically, it's such a competitive school. So not only do we compete in the Big Ten Conference, um, but academically, these guys are competing every day in the classroom and every evening in the classroom. So uh, we had a great summer. Everybody is eligible for the season. And uh, I thought we really did well in the classroom this summer. So now we got to pick it up again here uh, starting tomorrow. Big week, um, you know, first game. We had some first game jitters. We had some guys that were playing for the first time. You know, we played multiple quarterbacks. You know, there's a lot of stuff that we have to sort through and and uh, get better. I mean, really get better. We had 10 penalties. That's not who we are, but we did it, so it is. Um, we got to fix, clean that stuff up. So there's so much to work on. Um, you know, Wagner's coming in. They had a tough game with Fordham, so um, I'm sure they're going to be hungry and come in here looking to, to impress. And, you know, to me, it's about us. We got to get better. And uh, just like la last week was about us, you know, uh, this week's about us. So questions? Greg, I wanted to ask you about Noah. How has he handled the, the injury and what kind of role has he played with the younger guys while he's been out? He's been great with the younger guys. He's coached them. You know, no one wants to go into coaching when he's done playing. So um, he's done an awesome job. He's helped me. He's helped Sean quite a bit. Um, he's handling it well, but he's like a you know like a caged animal. He wants to play, and this is very frustrating to him. So, um, but we'll just week to week and see it, see how it heals learning about this team and, and individual players just because they are so young and, and what they can do and how does that kind of impact what each week of practice is like for you quite a bit Chris it's a, it's a, it's a good point in that it's not only the young guys that haven't played you know like a guy like Wesley Bailey who hasn't played football for us all of a sudden he goes out and he really has a good game right a very productive game well okay that's good then there's some other guys a guy like Desmond Igmanus and got a little time in the bowl game and now he goes out and plays you know I don't know he played 70 80 plays and did a good job like those things you have to now assess and say okay so now what what's the next step for them how do we redistribute some of the repetitions um, offensive line you know there, there, there's a lot of different areas that we have to address and I mentioned it in the open with with improvement so as I said to our coaches you know we had a great workout last night um, we just have so much to get, so much to do. It's almost, uh, you know, overwhelming, but we just got to keep chopping. That's what chopping is, you know, just chop the moment, whatever we're working on right now. And, you know, we'll run out of time. There's no doubt. But how much can we get done before the, the kickoff at 4 o'clock? That's our goal. Before getting into the question, just to just be sure, the two-quarterback system is still a possibility for Saturday. Correct. Yeah, anything's – whatever – what, so we don't have to answer this too many more times going forward. Whatever – this will be a blanket statement for the whole year. Whatever gives us the best chance to win is a possibility. So then basically anything's a possibility if it gives us a chance to win. Sure. So yeah. to that effect, with the two-quarterback system, just take us – can you take us through a bit about the decision-making process on one, who makes the decisions, how the, the decision of who comes in when, who comes out when, how that comes about, just how do you guys go about – Making, making those decisions? Well, ultimately, you know, personnel is my decision, right? I listen to all my coaches. Um, I watch the video with them. I watch it separately. I get a lot of reports come to me. Um, but at the end of the day, I have to, that's my job as the head coach. During the game, I give my coaches latitude based on what they want to call, who they want doing it. And I thought Sean, uh, Sean and the offensive staff did a good job, really good job of managing that. Um, but some of that is, you know, subjective, right? I mean, how do you how do you know? You don't know. They're human beings. You don't know how people are going to react. Neither one of those quarterbacks have played a substantial amount of football, so 
you know, you're getting to see it just as we are. We see it in practice, but the games are different. I mean, we all know that. And uh, so we're learning about them and, and just, you know, just as everybody is. And then, you know, when are you going to name a, a, a starter, you know, again, when it gives us the best chance to win. Coach, uh, obviously you're on the precipice of a milestone becoming you would tie Frank Burns this week if you win for the most wins ever at Rutgers. What's something that you learned from Frank Burns as a coach and how is he able to build this kind of how how is he able to first identify Rutgers as, and build that into a program? What'd you learn from him? Well, Coach Burns, I got the opportunity in my first go round to meet him. Uh, unfortunately, his health had failed later on, but uh, I really enjoyed it. You know, he was such a I don't know what the word is, stately. Like, you know, he had that white, when I got to know him, he had that white hair and he was just such a gentleman that um, I was so impressed being around him. And, uh, you know, we would talk football. He was a tough guy. I mean, he was legitimate, old school, do it right, work hard and good things happen. And, um, you know, we didn't really ever talk X's and O's as much as we talk philosophy, head coaching things. So I, I always enjoyed my time with Coach. Um, I've been blessed. I've had some great people that I've had a chance to be around. What do you What are you seeing uh, now from Christian Broswell, and also just the way he handled coming back from the injury, the adversity, um, and, and obviously made a big play the other day. So what are you kind of seeing from him? Yeah, I was glad. I mean, I'm certainly happy that for our team, but I was really glad for him individually because he's been up against it, right? I mean, he, he decides to transfer here and then in the summer hurts his knee, misses the entire season, then has some health issues this spring. Um, I know the way he felt. He felt like snake pit, you know, like well, when's it going to end? And that, to make a big play like that was so good for him and so good for us. So uh, I'm hoping this is kind of a, as I said to him, this is a launching pad for you right now. Tosh Harris, 11 snaps, one catch. What, why was his role so so limited? Oh, I think, you know, it's just competition. We have a lot of guys that are playing. You know, you saw we played a lot of guys at a lot of positions, and that was on purpose. And, uh, you know, I'm hopeful that his reps will, will grow um, as we get more and more comfortable. You know, he's a newcomer who, who has really worked hard to get himself in a position to to compete. So uh, I'm I'm – I'm hopeful that 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 grows. No, there was no nothing other than other than just playing a lot of people. Greg, we talked a lot about the double linebackers. Mics. I didn't realize we had double mics. That's double tricky. Mics. That's good. <laughs> we had, you talked a lot about the linebackers coming into the season. How would you assess Tyree and Dion's performance in uh, Week One? Yeah, I thought they played well. I thought they both played well. Um, again, Dion played a lot more his first year with us than his second and then uh Tyreen played last year he got a start actually at Indiana and um but I thought you know you never really know and now they were the guys right and I thought they both they performed well it's a good again a launching pad for them again all of this is a starting point and uh you know because we win by one point it all feels so different but had we not you know if Kyle Manungai doesn't get that fumble we don't win the game, right? So we're not, we're never, now everything feels differently. So that's what I tried to talk to the team about is, you know, the 150 text messages that were on your phone after the game would have been zero. And one point is what changes all that. And that's what they have to understand. That's the fine line in major college football. So what does that mean? Is it, you sit there and worry about that? No, it's all about the preparation, what you're willing to put forth, the effort you're willing to put forth, the attention to detail all week long. We had some guys cramp. You know, I'm not a big – I don't have a lot of sympathy for crampers. That's about preparation. You have to prepare. You have to drink. You have to – throughout the game, it's easy to get distracted and not do that. I think all of these things are what we learned. Those penalties, a lot of them were unforced errors. That's not who we are, but we did it. So it is until we change it. That is who we are. Those are the things that we have to work on this week, and there's got to be laser focus on that. Um, so that's my job, and that's our staff's job, to make sure that we aid and help these guys take them where they want to go. There's no lack of want to. There's no lack of hard work. 
but we have to learn to be where our feet are and really focus on that moment. We call it chop the moment. We have to do that. When we did that, we were good Saturday. When we didn't, we made silly mistakes and we didn't perform even close to our capabilities. Obviously, you said starting, it's better to teach from the win column, obviously, than the loss column. But one, starting 1-0, one and oh, beating Boston College, from your perspective, what does that mean for your team moving forward? Um, you know, I told our team this. Boston College and Rutgers all had the same goal. We wanted to be 1-0 and oh at the end of the first game. So we got that done. And that feels good, right? When you work really hard at something and then you achieve it. But now that's done. And as I told them, we have a 24-hour rule like a lot of teams do. And we, we celebrated the win. Yesterday we were in here watching the tape. And there's so much on that tape to correct. There's no way we can possibly get it all corrected in a week's time. But we're going to work. And as I told them, the key is don't make the same mistakes twice. If we, can, if we can correct a mistake and not make it, there's new mistakes that will be made, but if we can keep from making the same mistakes. And the other thing I said is if, if one guy makes it, we all make it. Let's learn from each other's mistakes. That's what we need to do. There will be plenty of mistakes, but as the year goes on, when you have a really good football team, you start running out of mistakes. They become fewer and far between. But I'll tell you what, that sheet was just full of them Saturday. And uh, I'm grateful for how hard they played. If they didn't play that hard, we wouldn't have won. My hat's off to our strength and conditioning staff. The, the, they were real, our team was very well conditioned. And to be able to do what they did in the fourth quarter is critical. But that's, that's a testament to their conditioning, how much the strength and conditioning staff and the players put into it this summer. Um, so we have a base, but we have to correct these mistakes. And it's, it's a challenge. It's going to be a race. You know, right now, time is our enemy. We don't have enough time to get it all fixed, but we're going to try. Appreciate you.